This is a tutorial for the Ink Story Engine from Inkle Studios. Um, Ink is more sophisticated than what I'm showing here, but I want to emphasize this video is for beginners. You'll be able to make an interactive graphic novel or a simple choice game showing off your AI art. Ink is free and open source. There are Ink plugins for all the game engines, Unity, Unreal, and the others. But today I'm building an interactive story for the web with a tool called Inky. It's the official tool for writing ink. Download it from inklestudios.com or their GitHub. Inky will compile our project down to JavaScript and export it as a standalone web page. People won't need to add a plugin or download an app to see the story. As a writer or artist, you aren't touching code, but there is a kind of scripting punctuation inside the story text. Ink uses Markdown, which is minimal tags and punctuation combos, the kind of things that styles the text on Discord. If you can learn that, you can learn Ink. Once you have Inky downloaded, go ahead and launch it and follow along. This is easier to learn by doing. It's really just remembering some markdown tags. Inky opens with some starter text. I'll delete it and type an opening sentence, something obvious like, once upon a time. Notice how Inky is displaying a constantly running update of the live text in its runtime window. Let's start with our first Ink markdown. It's a basic story continue prompt. The story engine will print all the text up to this point and then wait here for some user interaction. A plus sign, followed by square brackets, creates a choice option. Well, we have only one choice, so it's not really a choice. Type the word continue inside the square brackets. The text inside the brackets will become a button. I'll write a story caption for each image. I'm using four or five AI images, a couple of characters, and two locations, keeping it short for this tutorial. I'm copy-pasting the plus continue prompt between each story beat so the reader will hit the continue button to load the next image and caption. At the end of our story, we'll write our second ink markdown and tell the story to end. This markdown is ink's go-to command. It's a regular hyphen followed by a greater than symbol, making a little arrow pointing to the right. After the arrow, type END in all capital letters. We're telling Ink to go to a function that ends the runtime. Clear Inky back to the beginning of the story with the double back arrows. Now we can click through the runtime continue buttons, loading the story one section at a time. Great. Now I'll insert a tag to display an image after the plus continue. Very simple. It's just hashtag image in all caps semicolon, and the name of the JPG. Over in the interactive runtime, we can see the tag, but no image. That's because the next few tags are not part of ink. They're used by the Inky web template. These tags trigger JavaScript on our Inky exported web page. Under the file menu, export for web so we can check the results in a web browser. Inky exports a folder with the index.html page a CSS file, the compiled story, and a couple of JavaScript files for handling the runtime. Drop your art images in this folder and launch the index page in a web browser. The title of our exported project is formatted as the title of our story. That's this inky web template. I'll override it in a second. As you can see, our story loads the images and the captions. We need to hit the continue button and eventually the story hits the end and stops. We get this endless web page that keeps loading the content and scrolling down. Well, I want the web page to look more like a visual novel, so I'm adding another web-only tag to clear the page before it loads a new image. This tag looks like hashtag clear in all caps. I'm pasting the clear tag between each of the plus continue and the image tags. This is another tag that isn't doing anything inside Inky's runtime, but will only affect the web template. Since this is an HTML page, basic markdown and probably even full HTML scripting works to style your text according to web markdown rules. You can add bold or italics or underlines, and if you're good with CSS, 
you can add custom style classes to the Inky Web template. Check the CSS file in the Inky export for other formatting styles that are built in. Let's take a look at our linear story. In our second lesson, I'll introduce two concepts that allows us to skip around inside the story. A hyphen with a name in parenthesis creates a labeled anchor point. Ink calls this a gather, where the story jumps seamlessly to a new part of the script. A hyphen followed by a greater than symbol creates a go to command. Remember our go to end? Here we're sending the story to a labeled gather. The right arrow sends the story to that anchor point. Let's add gathers to each of our different story parts, creating an anchor and a unique label for each section. After each plus continue, I'll add a go to and send the story back to our first gather point. This first gather is our home base, or the story hub. In fact, I'll just change the plus continue bracket text to go home. Now let's edit the first plus continue and expand into a multiple choice menu. For each choice, we'll add a new plus and square brackets, and inside the square brackets, we'll write the text for that button. On a new line, after each choice, I'll add a go to and send the story to the intended gather. Resetting the inky runtime, we should start at our hub and be able to visit the other story locations or story nodes. Hitting the go home button sends us back to the hub. So far, we've done a linear progression story, like a graphic novel. Start at the beginning and see all the content until you hit the end. Then we added choice options to navigate the images like node locations, similar to a hyperlink website or a catalog. This is a good structure for certain content that we want to see again and again. But in a story we can't keep going back to the same content, it's got to be dynamic and changing. If we go back to talk to the same guy, he should say something new and acknowledge that we talked before. Inc. has a great system for handling this with inline variable text. In fact, this is one of Inc.'s best features that sets it apart from other dialogue and choice systems. Text inside curly brackets becomes conditional. We can add a sequence of alternate text separated by a vertical bar, and Inc. will cycle through it each time. It stops on the last item in the sequence. Unless a markdown tag is used at the beginning of the curly brackets, an ampersand loops the conditional text so the sequence never stops. An exclamation mark goes blank after the last item. A tilde shuffles the sequence, and once all the content has been seen, shuffles again. Leaving blanks between the vertical bar will work as none or empty text. These sequences can be nested just by inserting another set of curly brackets. Variants can have variants. One last markdown trick with the curly brackets uses our gather labels as the conditional check. Those labels work as int variables. They're initially set to zero and tick up like a counter each time we pass the gather point. To test if certain content has already been seen, we just add a little logic to the top of the curly brackets testing whether our label is greater than zero. Everything after the colon is added to the text only if the condition is true. If we add a vertical bar, we have the option for a second text when the label is false. In other words, when the content has not been seen. In the same way we hide conditional text, we can also hide a conditional choice option. Add a pair of curly brackets between the plus and the square brackets. Inside the curly brackets, put the conditional logic. In this case, I only want this choice option to appear after the player has visited both characters twice. I know I said we wouldn't touch code, but regular JavaScript logic works. We can test for multiple conditions at the same time using double ampersand for the and check and the word or to check if either condition is true. Let's take a look at my final export. I have some content that is seen once and doesn't repeat. From a hub location, I have a multiple choice menu with a hidden choice because the conditions haven't been met. When I visit the old man, his text shuffles. When I visit the son, his text cycles through his sequence and stops. 
and he has conditional dialogue if I've already visited the father. After a few visits to the son, the old man will tell us something new. And once I've visited both men twice, a new choice option allows me to go to bed. Ending the story.